Hey guys and welcome back to another Altium Designer tutorial. In this video I'm going to talk about annotation and placing components equally distributed from each other at a specific, specific distance. So I've got an example of this PCB. As you can see I've got my LEDs here, my read switches, my capacitors and they're all perfectly lined up and I've got D1 here, D2 here, D3, D4, D5 and that's annotation. So annotation is the naming we give our components like D for LEDs and diodes, R for resistors, um, SW for switches, U for ICs or microcontrollers. So that's called annotation and that is very important how to link your schematic to your PCB. So this is what this video is going to focus about, how to work with annotation in Altium, uh, the advantages of it and how to use it effectively to make a big board. So let's say we've got 64 of these LEDs. How will you get it nicely equally from each other how will you make sure my d1's on top left without moving it one by one by one so in this video i'm going to show you how to do it easily efficiently quickly let's get started so as we can see here i've got leds of 64 leds with read switches d1 d2 d3 all nicely evenly spaced and this is linked to these leds d1 d2 d3 so what normally happens in Altium is if I don't have any components placed, Altium will automatically put all your components in the bottom right hand corner. And that takes a lot of time to copy over one LED at a time, one read switch at a time, or one capacitor at a time. So let's see how can we do that efficiently, quickly, and correctly, most importantly. So when you get to Altium, you can see my LEDs here has a designator called D and resistors are like I discussed earlier. So what you have to do is you have to give these numbers so that they match on your PCB as well. So what you normally do is you go tools, annotate schematic, and then what I normally do is annotate schematic quietly. This will do all the annotation on the schematics that you haven't done yet, and you push yes, and will update these numbers. So now you can see it actually did quite nicely with D1, D2, D3, D4, and that is what we want. But what happens if that happen, doesn't happen? What happens if it starts doing D7, D8, uh, because on the other sheets you might have an LED? That's what I want to look at now. So if this is the case, it's nice. It's much easier to work like this than having D1, D5, D7, D10, D2. So try to keep everything. But now I also want my D1 to be matched with a C1 capacitor. And that's not happening now, right now. So these capacitors have to be close to LED, they are decoupling capacitors, but now C12 has to be close to D1, and I don't want that, I want C12, or C12 to become C1, so that that can relate to one another. The same with my switches, I want my read switch, R1, and SW1 to be with my LED1, because they're all gonna to be together. So let's see how we can make this R13, R1, and this R2, R3, and so forth. So if you already had all your components annotated, you can just go Tools, Annotation, Annotate Schematic, and then you can say Reset All. Okay, Accept Changes, Execute, and now it will make all your designators a question mark, and this is what we want. So what we're gonna do now is we're only gonna annotate this sheet, because that will force it to go D1, C1. So Altium will always go, Altium will always go, if you can annotate, annotate schematic quietly, it'll always go from the top bottom. So it'll all annotate this. So if your capacitor is here, it'll go C1, C2, and just carry on all the way through my sheets. So we don't want that. We just want to annotate this first. So we go Tools, Annotate Schematic, and over here on the left hand side, we choose only to do the LEDs, which is my WS21. And now we can either go all or we can select it. Let's see what happens if we do this. Update change list. We say accept created, execute. And there you can see I've got D1 and C1 now. The rest of my sheets will still be question marks because I only did a specific sheet on here on the left hand side. So it's a nice tip or trick just to annotate one sheet at a time to have control exactly what you want it to have. So you can see this resistor is R1, but I actually want my R1 
to be part of my read switches here but i'll get to that so as i mentioned i want my r1 to be a one here but i already have r1 over here so what i can do i can just double click on this open my properties and make this a question mark i'll come back to this later as this is not the important part question mark and now we go to my read switches and i do the same i go tools annotate schematic and i just choose the sheet update changes and here on the left hand side you can actually see the sequence of events so always go left to right and down and you can change this depending on what you want this is more the generic one that most pcb designers use and there we go i've got r1 s1 r2 s2 with my outputs this just makes it so much easier when you want to start reading um, on your esp32 with arduino or whatever you want to do r2 switch to r2 it just all matches it's easy for the brain to understand so that's how you do it tools annotate and it's schematic and now i choose all of them and now i just say update don't reset because then we'll make all your ones that you've had all question marks again so we'll only do the changes except execute and there you'll see uh not the sheet yeah you won everything's done now and now we should be able to take it to our pcb so to take your components from your schematic to the pcb you just go design update and then you'll see it will add your capacitors and resistors and diodes and things like that but look what happens when i say execute changes so now i brought all my components to my pcb but now look at all my leds i've got all my leds here my read switches so how can i get it so it's nicely here d1 d2 d3 d4 to move this manually is just going to be horrible and not ideal so now i'm going to show you what to do a nice easy way to make to make sure it's nice evenly spaced and that you don't have to move it one by one by one and then move it but randomly it's just horrible so what i will do is i'll design update and then i'll disable everything disable all and then I'll just take my C1 that I wanted, my D1 that I wanted, my SW1, my R1 that I wanted, and my SW1 that I wanted. So I'll only add those. And now I can take these and move it where I want it. So I want my D1 top left, somewhere there, and I can just put it here. So and then I can put it nicely where I want it. Um, a nice trick is to make this my zero point. So I can go E for edit, origin, set and i can click here so this is my zero point so when i click on my led now you'll see here i've got 15 15 so i can just go 15 15 15 and it'll be perfectly in the center because these are 30 by 30 and i can lock it just to be sure and then i can move my resistor somewhere capacitor but now i want this layout on all 64 boards so what I would do is, there might be other ways as well, I would take it, copy, and you always copy with a reference. So I copy to this reference, and I just paste. Now you'll see underscore, but we'll get to that. And I can just do this to fill up the whole board. So when you start copying and pasting it, you'll see it starts being a SW underscore, underscore two, underscore three. So it just automatically does that. Um, that's just how the PCB annotate. But that's no issue. What we do is just make sure we go tools, re-annotate, and then you can actually annotate the PCB. And you can choose different ones. Um, but what we want is we want the first letter to be top and then go down to right and down. So this one, and we just say okay. And now you'll see it made all S1, S1, D1, C1. And now it just looks so much nicer. They are all this exact same in their little square. So the tip of the day is use the edit origin set and set your zero point. So you can always have a reference what you want, what you can control. They're 15, 15, and it's just very, very nice. But the problem you have now is there's no nets. So it's not linked to the schematic yet. So to do that, we do the same. We go to the schematic, tools, design sorry update and you will see automatic or manual so we just 
automatically create the links. And now we have to be careful. It's always nice just to have a quick look at what it wants to add. So you can see it doesn't want to add any C1s, D9s. So that is very good. Um, it will add the nets, which it's supposed to do. So we'll add D1 to 5 volts. So that's a good sign. It might modify some stuff, but it should not add the component. So let's see what happens. Just remove the rooms because not important. And there you can see all our links are connected. So if this made sense, if I want to place a track, this should somehow connect to this LED and it does. So that we successfully done it. So you'll see all my components on the right hand side. Yeah, that's there. We can move this manually how we want to, but our LEDs and switches are all perfect now. So this is just a nice indication that you can place your components before you update from your schematic. So you don't need to do, do, the, do the normal way of design, update, and then move it. You can place your components first and then link it afterwards. It takes more focus, more concentration, um, but it can be done to make it neater and just more efficient. So if, it, if you made it this far in the video, then you deserve another trick. So another trick is, let's just make this origin, uh, origin set. Yeah, so this is our origin. Let's just set it back at the bottom. So your origins should always be at the bottom left of your board. It's just good practice for the pick and place files when you create it. So what I did was I copied, copy with respect to something. So you always copy your respect to a thing. So if I paste it, it stays with respect to that. So I pasted all this one by one by one by one. But of course, Altium will have a, a better plan. So if I copy it and I can just go on top here and say edit, paste special, paste array. And I've got eight by eight, I think. And we want linear. Let's see what happens. So what important was is the spacing is not the same. So what we have to do is we know this is 15. And we know that each one is three. So we want them 15. We want them three centimeters from each other as well. So to there's 15 millimeters and then so to another 15 millimeters. So we do that again, we copy to a point. So we can actually delete this because once you paste it, paste special, paste array, and item count increments 30. Let's see what happens. Very nice, same problem with the SW, but now we can do the same circular. <laughs> you can also do that if you want. So that's it. So you can either use edit, paste special array, or what you can just do is hide the other layers with shift s and just highlight this make sure you highlight everything and keep in spacebar highlight that and then we copy again from a reference and then we can paste it so this will be maybe quicker and we do the same highlight this with our shift make sure we get everything in highlight everything here Control c choose your reference point and then we just paste again and this was much quicker so that's how you can get your components on the PCB. So either edit, paste, special, paste array, where you can make circle arrays, um, or you can just copy the old fashioned way, paste, highlight as much as you can. So just to rec recap quickly, um, we worked on tools, annotate, annotate schematic, and here you can annotate each sheet by itself. Uh, you can choose which way you wanna annotate. So I would say do sheet by sheet, then you have more control about it. When you get to the PCB, you can actually copy and paste components throughout the design. So you can place your component before you link it with your design update. And then you can annotate on the PCB as well with re-annotate and then choose which way you want the numbers to annotate. And then you get a nice understandable PCB. I hope that helped guys. And that's it. That's how easy it is to take a bunch of components and put it nicely on your PCB evenly spaced, um, how to place your components on your PCB before you even connect it to your schematic. It does take more focus, but it can make it a neater design. And then how do you annotate each sheet by itself so that you can have more control of your designators and it's more understandable when you want to do debugging your PCB. When I know R1 and D1 is connected somehow, it's just easier to look after it's populated. Um, so yeah, so we took this board, not, 9 LEDs to 64, quick and easy. Um, guys, if you enjoy this video, uh, give a thumbs up, subscribe. 
We also have a membership program now that you can join. So next to the subscribe button, there's a join button. If you just want to support our cause of helping you guys, um, yeah, it'd be great to appreciate it. But as, as always, our design, our stuff will always be free. So no hard feelings if you don't join. Um, but yeah, we enabled it because we can. It enables us to help more people. Um, guys, have a fantastic night, day, fantastic night, fantastic morning. Um, until I see you guys next week for a new tutorial. Bye.